Welcome to Take Two, the talk show where we take two actors and get two takes on the real lives of working performers. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. Like any epic adventure, the journey of an actor is filled with struggles and triumphs, highs and lows, extraordinary moments, as well as tough learning experiences. It's a voyage of self-discovery that requires taking risks and a real element of unpredictability. But it is in the risk that lies a reward. Kyle Fuller and James Burleson are joining me on the Take Two set today. These gentlemen have taken action in their lives and careers and are putting their best foot forward in their own adventures in acting. Both Kyle and James bring a wealth of experience and have two unique perspectives on the pursuit of becoming an actor. You're gonna love these guys. Kyle, James, welcome to Take Two. Welcome, thanks for having me. Hey, yes, absolutely. I'm glad to have you both here today. You know, I wanna start this conversation off to a gentleman with, uh, with a quote by the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu. He said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. You know, let's start by talking about your background and how did that influence your acting journey today? James, I wanna start with you. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Well, that's an enormous question and thank you for asking that. Sure. So I am a military brat. So my dad served for 26 years in the United States Air Force. And so I came from a very secure family with absolutely no background in the entertainment industry whatsoever. So I actually felt like that I wanted it so bad that I had to pick up and do the research on my own, if you will. But I also knew that I wanted to be secure. That was always important to me because I grew up in such a secure family. And my dad, you know, serving all those years in the military, it's one of those things where I knew in the back of my seat that I wanted to have. So, of course, when in the military, I served eight years myself. And then long story short, when the time came to reenlist again after the second enlistment, which made the eight-year mark, 2011, I had to make a conscientious choice. Do I want to stay in or do I really just want to take that leap, that risk, and actually see what it's like to continuously audition full time? And it was probably the hardest decision I ever made in my life. But I chose to do that. And I am so glad that I took that risk because I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Kyle, the same question to you. Uh, tell our audience a little bit about yourself and you know how your acting journey all came to be. Thank you. I was born at a very young age. Um, fast forward a bit. Um, after college, I spent 14 years for a company as an engineer. And... Um, a technology company. We built some multiplexing equipment. Then I spent another five years in the golf industry as a professional caddy okay. and sold uh, the backyard putting greens. Then I uh, went to my uh, current seven to five employer and I've been with them since. But backing up a little bit in uh, fall of 2021, it was kind of in the middle of COVID, um, I saw on Facebook they were somebody was looking for background for the 1883 Western that was being filmed here. I thought, how cool would it be being a Western? Oh, nice. <laughs> that would be awesome. So I got on a, a casting site that was promoting it and uh, didn't get in with 1883. But there was a film being filmed locally with uh, Michael Chiklis and all the senior, the football film. Yeah. And I was able to get in a, a background role of that and uh, immediately uh, caught the bug. And uh, since then, it's been my... Um, my side gig is, um, I don't think OnlyFans is my thing. <laughs> <laughs> understood, understood. Well, uh, you know, Kyle, uh, you know, acting uh, often involves an element of risk taking and uh, things like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, can you talk about a time when, um, you know, in your journey that taking a risk actually, you know, paid off? Uh, was there something creatively, a uh, uh, decision you made or something that, uh, that affected your acting, uh, your acting experience? Oh, there was a role I saw on a casting site for a, they wanted a boxer for a commercial, um, uh, for a law firm. And, um, you know, I, at first they wanted a 40 something guy that looked like a boxer. At, the, at first I thought, I, re I really don't fit this part. That's not me. But, uh, yeah, I just took a shot and, and put it forward and it happens. The, um, client chose my picture and I did a little, um, short audition and got the gig. So, um, you just, you just never know, you know, you got to put yourself out there. Absolutely. And being your authentic self, sometimes what you present is uh, not what the casting director was really looking for initially, but then changes their mind and says, you know what, 
that fits, you know, and that works. So that works well. So, um, James, you know, same question to you. Uh, can you describe, uh, you know, a time when you took a big risk in your acting career and it paid off? Yes. Uh, my experience is a little bit different than Kyle's. So, uh, when I had mentioned earlier that I had made that decision, I had more time than ever to dedicate to auditions because when you're in the military, you sort of, if you have, you're expected to show up in uniform on time at 0700 hours, there's, it's non-negotiable, right? So now that I had all this extra free time, even though I was in the reserves at that time and I had a full-time job, I still had more time and flexibility to be able to submit. And so eventually, uh, I started getting cast in a lot of different TV series, uh, had my first lead role in a feature film in 2015, I think it was. Awesome. So uh, it was more, this is a more generalized answer, but I just, I was uh, ready and available. I was in the right place at the right time. And so, yeah, I couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, just to kind of follow up on your on your experience, do you do you gravitate towards roles that are military based, or do is that something that you use your background experience to, you know, to play those roles on camera? Awesome question, and I love that you asked that. Thank you so much. I will say, yes, definitely back then because I am an expert when it comes to military customs and courtesies, how to salute how to uh, uh, forward march, how to do all those ROTC functions. By the way, I was in ROTC for four years as well. In any event, I think that for me, uh, I always felt like it was a very safe, very safe way to go about of a role if there was any kind of structural background to it or any uniformity or self-discipline. That was always to my advantage. But right now, I've done so many of those kinds of roles, police officers, fire responders, even, uh, I don't want to say serial killer. I played serial killers, <laughs> but there's a militant uh, way about it, yeah. right? Yeah. So those are just safe for me because they're so easy. So I would love to uh, broadcast myself more widely into comedic roles, roles that might even be a musical. I think that increases your depth and it widens your range, right? Yeah. And so it takes you outside your comfort zone as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, being outside of my comfort zone is perhaps sometimes not my favorite thing to do, but it's like overcoming a fear. And then once you break through that pattern, you almost feel like you can do anything. And especially when it comes to cinematic art, can't complain. That's it. Well, uh, you know, Kyle, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of piggyback on that and just say, you know, in the adventures in acting, you know, there's often survival skills that, uh, that you have to maintain, especially when the competitive world of acting. Uh, what are some things you do to stay on top of your game? I think it's important to get um, education on acting, um, acting classes. I've done a few classes with Fort Worth Actor Studio. Cool. And um, there's others in the, in the DFW Metroplex. Mm -hmm. It's all it's important to network. Um, very critical. Which you'll meet some some very good people in this industry. Some you'll be friends with for life. You'll, you'll be surprised. And uh, there's there's Facebook group groups dedicated to yeah. acting. Um, some are better than others. You have to kind of kind of manage that. Um, I like to get um, articles emailed to be regularly on through my email uh, through some of my casting sites I'm involved with. And um, yeah, I mean there's always there's always ways to improve. Step up your game. Step up your um, auditioning. Um, you know. Adjusting the lighting, get better backing, um, better sound. There, uh, you can always improve on things. That's it. So constant improvement and always learning, seeking to learn and seeking out knowledge. That's a good. That's uh, a good, you know, plan for life and and career. Absolutely. So, uh, James, you know, how do you navigate the unpredictable terrain of an actor's career path? Um, you know, was there ever a time in your journey where you you, know, you wanted to give up? You know, like uh, so tell tell our audience a little bit about that. Yes, while I was in the military, actually, because I had just started acting at that point. I think it was September of two thousand seven, and there was a film. It was my second audition. It was called One Hundred One Secrets. I'll never forget the title. <laughs> and so, over the next, we all had such busy schedules. I think there were people that were from San Francisco and other parts of California that were coming to Texas to film this. And so it was a long journey, and there were a lot of different scenes filmed within a year and a half to two years. And then I get this unforgettable email that says all of my scenes are going to be cut. Oh. I was really upset. 
Oh boy. And uh, at that point, I think that was probably the pinnacle of when I wanted to give up. Mm -hmm. And so, but I chose, I said to myself, I'm not going to allow this experience to have total satisfaction over what was to come futuristically with the opportunities that I could have. And it just takes a little faith to be able to do that. And so that would probably be the one moment. Obviously, there are a lot of other setbacks that can take place. But one thing I will want to point out is that over the years when I've uh, auditioning, even though it's probably not my favorite thing to do, it's absolutely necessary. Once I stopped caring about what people were thinking or what people were saying about anything that might have had to do uh, to uh, to coordinate with one of my auditions, that's when my acting got better because I was more focused on the fun of everything and being able to really just censor myself to um, anything that anything that was just internal and anything that had to do with the audition itself rather than anything that would perhaps interfere with the success of me getting a role and making a difference or an impact positively on screen. I think that was once I learned that and it took a very long time. It's not something it's like a light switch where it's just in and out. You know, it takes a lot of experience and a lot of practice and of course, never to be afraid of rejection. Mm. Okay. That's a big one. Cool. That is that. Yeah, that is absolutely. a big one. <laughs> For sure. Well, uh, you know, speaking of not being able to forget a title and uh, and having fun, you know, here on Take Two, we like to give a little subversive twist with a little fun segment. Uh, after the break, I'm going to put uh, Kyle and James in the hot seat for a fun little uh, segment that we like to call What's in a Title? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jeff Savage, marathon runner and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Savage Resilience, Conquer Adversity and Be Your Own Hero. In this powerful book, you'll discover correlations between what it takes to finish a marathon and what it takes to be successful in any long range goal you may have. Order your copy of Savage Resilience today on Amazon or by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. The audio book is also available on Audible and the iTunes store on Apple devices. I'm Jeff Savage, and I encourage you to conquer adversity and be your own hero. Let's face it, people tend to put trust in professionals that stand out from the crowd with a distinguished and unique personal brand. In today's competitive digital world, one of the most powerful ways to achieve this top of mind awareness is with a personal branding video. A personal branding video is a more engaging way to deliver your message. It generates more trust with your audience. It improves your online presence, and it's an easily shareable marketing asset. Go to personalbrandingvideo.now.site for all of the details and upcoming dates for our next personal branding video day at Sync Lab Media. We'll see you at our next personal branding video day. Welcome back to Take Two. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. I am here today with Kyle Fuller and James Burleson. We're going to uh, do a little fun segment here called What's in a Title? Putting uh, Kyle and James in the hot seat to uh, ask them some rapid fire questions. They're going to tell me if these movie titles are the titles of romantic comedies or not. So just a little fun way to uh, kind of put a little, a little subversive spin on this interview. So uh, Kyle, I'm going to start with you. 10 movie titles you say yes or no. Is it a romantic comedy or is it not? So, The Proposal. Yes. It is indeed. Uh, Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds. The Ring. No. It is indeed. That's a horror movie. Uh, You've Got Mail. Yes. And Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. You Got Served. No. It is all right. It's a dance movie. It's, it's indeed. So, 10 Things I Hate About You. Yes. It is indeed. You're, you're pretty good at this. All right. Arrival. Mm, go with no. It is a no. That is a sci-fi movie about aliens coming to uh, visit us. Uh, Dead Poet Society. No. And you're correct. Uh, Overboard. Yes. Okay. Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell, indeed. Chernobyl Diaries. No. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> uh, two Weeks Notice. No. All right, that, you're correct. Uh, the, the Sandra Bullock and Hugh Grant. That was uh, that was uh, that was uh, that was a good run. Good job, good job, good job. All right, James. All right, here you're up in the hot seat. 
What's in a title? Are these movies romantic comedies or not? Okay. Gravity. No. No is correct. Serendipity. Yes. Kate Beckinsale and John Cusack. Uh, Bride of Chucky. No. <laughs> no. No, indeed. No, indeed. Uh, while You Were Sleeping. Yes. Okay. That's Bill Pullman and uh, Sandra Bullock. Uh, Black Swan. No. Okay, good. Natalie Portman. Uh, Mila Kunis, if not mistaken. Uh, it Could Happen to You. Oh, gosh. I I want to say yes. Yes, yes. yes. It's, uh, Bridget Fonda uh, and yeah. uh, Nicolas Cage. Uh, definitely, maybe. Yes. It is. Uh, Isla Fisher and uh, Ryan Reynolds. Train wreck. No. Ooh, it is. It is, really? It's, it's a Amy Schumer and an ensemble cast. And oh, wow. Okay. Archie romantic comedy. So. Okay. Mm. Uh, mannequin. Yes. Okay, okay. absolutely. Kate Cattrall and, yeah, Andrew uh, McCarthy. Annabelle. No. No, it's a horror movie. Indeed. <laughs> yes, so good job, good job. What's in the title? Sometimes uh, the movie can sound a certain way and then turn out to be something completely different. So uh, good job, guys. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. So um, you know, let's get back into, you know, you know, being an actor and, uh, okay. you know, you're in the industry. What is your view of success as, uh, as an actor? You know, how do you view be, uh, being successful? Um, well, James, I want to actually take this back to you. In your mind, uh, what is what does success look like to you in this industry? How did you know, or how do you see yourself being successful in the present and in the future? I think, great question, again, as always. I think success is defined on how you perceive it without anyone else's bias. And what I mean by that is that success to me means being a working actor, consistently working. Cool. And so I will say after over 17 years of acting, I would say the first five to seven years, I would take anything and everything because I was just trying to gain whatever experience I possibly could. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is being on set doing it. So I was willing and ready to take any kind of action at any time. I would have spent about 18, 19 hours on a set, which I have many times on different productions. And I would still do that today if I felt like it served the purpose, of course. And, you know, it's communicated and all that good stuff. If they if they say they want to do 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 takes, I am, maybe you're going to save me. I don't know. So I will be more than willing to do that. So success for me, to bring this back to the question, is really defined by just consistently auditioning, doing my job. And if I get rejected, move on to something else. Don't fret about it. You might be upset, but the only way you can get through that is if you keep going and having that persistent, or I should say consistent, sorry, momentum and not stopping at anything that's going to, uh, to uh, what's a word I'm looking for? Conceal your craft. Your craft is ongoing. Anyone can act at any age. Doesn't matter how old you are. So mm -hmm. I could go on and on and on, but I think just uh, consistently working for me is to find my defines my success for sure and it's a lot like being a batter in a baseball game you know you can't uh, you can't hit the ball if you don't take a swing yeah. you're not going to hit the ball every time you take a swing Absolutely. and so in the more opportunities that you get at bat the more opportunities that you get uh you know in front of the camera so yeah yeah i love that answer uh thank you so much thank you uh kyle you know what um you know where where's your acting journey going to take you you know where do you see yourself going with it what's what success look like to you as an actor well, um, I, I concur with what James was saying is, you know, you need to work in the industry and feel good about what you're doing day mm -hmm. after day. If it gets to be too much of a, of a grind, then you, you need to be doing something else. But uh, personally, I love it. Whether I'm on set 12 hours or, or two hours, um, you know, where I see myself, um, I'd like to be doing more um, commercial work, commercials, uh, uh, pay well, and you're typically on, on set for a shorter period of time. Um, I like to develop my acting skills to where I'm in more SAG film. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't see myself as a leading man in Hollywood, <laughs> but, uh, you know, five and under type roles, um, good supporting roles, I I think I kind of fit that niche. Right, but would you turn down a superhero role uh, if, if one came up? No. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, uh, you know, in reflection, um, I want to ask you both, like in your journey, you look back and you can, you can 
take out a, a certain moment that was a, when, a great moment, a spotlight moment in your career. Um, yeah. James, what was uh, one of the greatest moments of your acting career so far? Let's see. That's a tough one. Spotlight of my career. I think when I was cast uh, reels, there was this uh, one television series called The Price of Fame. And so that was a real pinnacle. That was a, a high achieving moment for me because it was, I was playing in the Reese Witherspoon episode and I was uh, playing Jim Talk, which is Reese Witherspoon's now former husband. Okay. And so that was in 20, I think we shot that in 2018, was released in 2019. And so that, and it was a big speaking role for me. So, and it, it did get me noticed quite well, mm -hmm. uh, not just around Texas, but in California, New York. I mean, I had a lot of people that were watching uh, at that particular time. So, uh, and it, exposure helps. It really does. I think that um, there's a certain um, ability to be down to earth in what you do receive and sharing it with others. So that way, for first-time actors, people that don't have the experience or don't know where to start, uh, it's important for us to sort of give back because I know I had some pretty uh, leading men and women that uh, have sort of helped me pave my way and uh, and prepare me for what was to come because no one's going to do this for you, by the way. Mm -hmm. You've got to do it yourself. It's like if you happen to smoke cigarettes, you know, no one's going to point, no one's going to try to stop you from doing it you you are the ultimate leader in your path so there yeah yeah and you know having mentors and anyone who can guide you on your path is a uh, very important yes yeah for sure kyle you know uh what's the uh you know what's the greatest moment in your acting career so far god i've had several roles i've uh, i've walked away from uh you know smiling this has been a great day said <laughs> there's one in particular in fact it was fairly recent i uh did a fan film at um uh so ut austin fan film it's uh a spider verse film okay great oh. um and uh was asked to be kingpin oh and, uh, i can totally see that that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> and all, in, all in for it i shaved my goatee shaved my head and on dark suit and um that's so much fun just trying to put myself into a Marvel character. Well, for sure. Put a Marvel character on the screen, my interpretation of it. And, uh, yeah, it was just so much fun. And uh, the footage we took, me and a couple other villains, the footage on screen on the on the YouTube video is only about a minute long, but, uh, uh, God, it was just, it's just so, so different from everything else I've done. Yeah. But, uh, be a Marvel character. Well, uh, at this time, I, um, I want to you know give you both the opportunity to uh, tell our audience a little bit about uh, you know how they can learn more about you, and you know if you're working on anything currently, if anything you want to talk about, uh, Kyle, why don't you tell the audience uh, where they can uh, find out more about Kyle Fuller? Um, you can reach me at um, the best place is Instagram Highlander Kyle is my um, handle there. Message me anytime, any questions you may have. Uh, There's currently a, a film I was in. I had a my supporting role, in fact, the feature-length film called Blue Power that uh, just got approval to be released on um, on different streaming services. So look at, be looking out for that, and uh, it's going to be it's a little edgy, but a powerful message and uh, quite a twist at the end. Oh, nice. Uh, another film I'm going to be a part of is um, called Richland Heights. It's a faith-based uh, series um, done by Kingdom Salvation Films, and I'll be filming that um throughout the summer. Oh, fantastic. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, James, uh, you know, how can our audience find out more about you? And uh, is there anything that you want to uh, talk uh, about? Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. So, again, my name is James Burleson. That's B-U-R-L-E-S-O-N. And my official website, jamesburleson.com. I try to keep that as updated as much as I possibly can. I am also on Instagram and Facebook. And my Instagram handle is at J Burleson Actor. That's J B U R L E S O N A C T O R. And then also I'm on Facebook. All you have to do is just uh, it's facebook.com slash James Burleson, one word. And so those are the two biggest social media platforms that I do use. You can also find me at J Burleson Actor on Twitter X, or I think it's X now. So, <laughs> so those are the main ones right there. 
And it's just so happens I do have a pretty uh, enormous movie coming out. It's called Mr. Gates. You can find more information about it at MrGatesMovie.com. Fun little fact real here, uh, real quick, is the fact that I was cast in this film back in 2016. Oh, wow. Yes. And seven years approximate, uh, excuse me, an approximation, seven years of script revisions and then financing and all that stuff. And and so, yeah, it's about to finally be released. Well, fantastic. We'll definitely uh, keep an eye out for that as well. Thank you. Kyle, uh, somebody out there uh, is watching this show right now who is just starting their acting journey. What's one piece of advice that you would give to somebody who uh, needs to hear something right now? I would say network 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 be vigilant but also be humble you know you're and in this industry realize you're you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea but uh, you are you're definitely someone's cup of tea so hang in there and uh, you'll be fine that's fantastic succinct and to the point but so important for sure for sure uh, James, um, you know, somebody out there is uh, you know, just starting their acting journey as well. What's one piece of advice that you might give to somebody who's just getting started? If you are trying to be an actor to be cool, don't. This job is not for cool people. I learned that very early on. So I think that uh, you know, they're not looking for a certain way that your eyebrow is. or not, they're, not waking, they're not looking for a specific accent or if you're acting tough and cool. Uh, and I'm always speaking from a, a masculine standpoint. Uh, yeah, I think that if you, this job is really more for uncool people, for people that are really not afraid to get foolish in front of others. Actors understand that, but people that perhaps will see you act or something, they may not understand that. And so, uh, and th that's what I'm saying. So don't get biased by ex. Uh, external perceptions and opinions really just put yourself out there and don't be afraid what um, don't care about what other people think it doesn't mean that people's opinions are not valid but you really are doing this for yourself again no one's going to do it for you except yourself so I'll leave you with that and thank you for asking oh fantastic you bet you know but I think the audience will agree you guys are both totally cool so you know like I uh, I think uh, you guys uh, are fantastic I want to thank our guests, Kyle Fuller and James Burleson here today thank to you. be our guest on Take Two. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. You can find out more about me by visiting my website, jeffsavageonline.com. Follow Take Two on social media, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sync Lab Media Studio. There you can find all episodes of Take Two streaming, as well as at the Sync Lab Media Network. Kyle, James, Thank you for being our guest today. Ladies and gentlemen, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. So, great job.